Welcome back. It's time to talk about bells. Now, if you think we've done an episode on bells already, you would be correct. That would be episode seven. And in that episode, um, I talked a little bit about the company. Um, I want to focus today a little bit more on Arthur Bell himself. Arthur Bell first started working for the company that would later bear his name in 1845. He was only 20 years old, um, and his job was to take orders from customers and later collect on their accounts. Six years later, in 1851, when he was only 26 years old, he became the third partner of the company. By 1865, he was the sole owner of the company, um, a company he would later rename Arthur Bell and Sons. Arthur wasn't particularly uh, interested in marketing or advertising, and he refused to put his name on his bottles. His sons didn't feel the same way. Um, they registered the extra special trademark in 1895. Um, Arthur passed away in 1900, and by 1904, his sons had put his name and his signature on the bottles. Uh, the company had no problem marketing after that, um, which would definitely pay off. By the 1970s, it was the best-selling scotch in Scotland. This is a bottle of Bell's Extra Special. The first thing I'm gonna have you take note of is the 70 proof notation at the bottom of the label. Like the United States, the United Kingdom shifted away from using proof to using ABV starting in 1980. So the 70 proof notation was from 1979 or earlier. Because these bottles were produced en masse, through the 1970s, and there aren't a lot of advertisements with this bell-shaped mini in them. It's hard to know the early state this could have been from. There is online one of these little guys that was bottled in 1976, and that's gonna be my earliest guess for this. Could be from before 1976, maybe, but I'm gonna play it conservative here. This mini of Bell's eight-year-old was exported to the United States. It does have the pint and proof measurements, which sets it pre-1980 like its two mates here. Now we wonder how far back does it go? And luckily, um, this bottle shape, this bottle style, showed up in a lot of advertisements with this bottle shape and the label type. After the 1960s, the bottle shape changed, the bottle label changed. So I'm gonna say this one here is from the 1960s. Lastly, we have this. Bell's Royal Vat 12-year-old. Like the 8-year-old, it has that pint and proof measurement on it, which takes it back into the 70s. I don't believe it's from the 60s because in the 1960s, the 12-year-old Royal Vat had this same um, bottle shape and label type. For most of the 70s, the 12-year-old was actually called Deluxe, not Royal Vat. And you can see why they switched to Deluxe. It has this 1970s faux luxury gleam to it, while Royal Vat sounds like a bucket of royal genetic fluid, if you take my meaning. Because the Royal Vat name was a carryover from the 1960s, I have a feeling that this one is from the early 70s. Bells, extra special from the mid to late 1970s. Bell's eight-year-old bottled in the 1960s. Well sealed. Perfect fill level. Bell's Royal Vat 12-year-old bottled probably in the early 1970s. Extra special. Apples and pears, brown sugar, some mothballs in a dank basement. Maybe a little bit of pine sap in there too. Uh, it starts taking on more caramel and sugar notes with time. Bell's eight year old from the 1960s. Wow. It's like a forest floor in autumn. It's earthy, you have like wet dead leaves, um, a little mossy. There's also some pineapple, lemon peel, hot melting candle wax. Bell's Royal Vat, 12 year old. There's milk chocolate, there's toffee, there's caramel, that hint of mothballs, maybe a little bit of grapefruit. 
it starts to get a little bit of mango and maybe a, a hint of, of, of rose blossoms. 1970s, extra special. Cheers. It is pretty rough. It's sweet, but it's like drinking liquid cardboard. Maybe some peanuts, plastic bottle, bottom shelf scotch. Maybe there's some sweetness that, that crawls in after a while. Maybe a little bit of citrus in the finish. I gotta say, this extra special is extra crappy. Bill's eight-year-old bottle in the 1960s. Cheers. Yeah, it, there's definitely uh, peated malt in here. It's sort of an industrial charcoal-like smoke, and it has this sort of rootiness and earthiness to it. Tart limes, it has the grapefruit, it has like a, a little bit of wasabi-like bite to it. A little bit of cigarette smoke in the finish too. It's so very different <laughs> from the extra special. Let's see where the 12-year-old royal vat fits in. Cheers. It's almost like liquid old bottle effect. It's metallic. It's a bit like licking glass, um, a little inky. Newspaper, dunnage. The only thing that would potentially worry me is this slight soapiness to it. It finishes a little sweeter with a nice lemony tanginess to it. Bell's extra special from the 1970s, it's pretty terrible. I'll be honest, this is just awful. I don't have any interest in drinking this uh, further, neat. Um, I am gonna try to make a highball of the remainder of this stuff later to see if Maybe that'll lift it up at all. The eight-year-old from the 1960s is great. It is a really bold, rugged, earthy, just malty fun drink. Then there's the 12-year-old. Uh, there's this massive gap between the nose and the palate. The nose lets you think it's gonna be one thing and the palate goes the other direction. The nose is very pretty. It's, it's very enticing. The palate is a little weird. Perhaps it's something to do with a storage issue. The fill level was very good. The fill level was up to here. The 1960s eight-year-old is um, something that, again, I would drink. I would be happy to drink it, especially in the autumn. One can't expect for all three of these to be excellent. I'm very thankful that one of them was. And I would like to wish you and your loved ones a very safe, a very healthy, and very happy holiday.